All right, welcome back to Angel Devil. And we've been talking, we're supposed to be talking about rebirth, but that got us talking about jealousy, all right? And try to get this picture, okay? You're uh, a full uh, pleasure being. You have lots of cool stuff. You're like the richest person in your country. And you have lots of cool stuff. And then there's people who are a little bit less rich than you. And, and by nature, I mean, the poor people are not so jealous of Warren Buffett's $81 billion because they'll never get it anyway. But the guys with $70 billion are jealous of Warren Buffett's $81 billion. You see what I mean? So... They take the example now of uh, you're a full pleasure being. You're like Warren Buffett with $81 billion. Then there's the half pleasure being who's got maybe $50 billion. And they're obsessed with your $81 billion. They can't enjoy their $50 billion. You see what I mean? That not that the way it goes? So then they say uh, this lesser pleasure being who had the $50 billion, uh, he, he looks, they look at the full pleasure being, Warren Buffett, with his $81 billion now, and they're unhappy about the $81 billion. They don't like the $81 billion, okay? Now we got a different kind of rebirth. Suppose one of those lesser pleasure beings, okay, that $50 billion guy dies, and he's born into the higher realm, and he gets the eighty-one billion dollars. Will he still hate the eighty-one, or not? You say yes. <laughs> okay, so you're jealous of somebody. They have a better car. They have the what do you call it, Bentley, and you just have a B B. Uh, what's that word? Stanley taught me the word in Chinese. Bao. Bauma, yeah, Bauma, precious horse, <laughs> BMW, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, so you have a, you know, so you, 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 you died, you were BMW owner, you died, you became a Bentley owner, when you were the BMW owner, you were jealous of the Bentley, and you didn't like the Bentley, okay, but now you own the Bentley, Okay, so if the lesser ones die and get reborn as one of those higher ones, remember the Bentley that the full deva possesses uh, would not have changed, could not have changed. Why? The Bentley couldn't have changed. Okay, so the lesser pleasure being who had the BM, the Bauma BMW, they died. Before they died, they're jealous of the Bentley. Okay? Then they died, and, and then they were born into the higher realm. Now they have, the, they have that Bentley. Okay? Now, uh, so now the being who was, had the BMW, much less Toy old Toyota like me, uh, now he's got uh, the Bentley. Okay? A, now the angel says to the devil, and the Bentley has not changed. Okay? The Bentley has not changed. Why? The, the Bentley that the guy was jealous of, and now the guy owns it. That the, the guy died and moved to a higher realm. But the Bentley, it didn't change. Tell me why. Because the devil is correct. Okay, the Bentley that the guy was jealous of, and then he got it, right? The Bentley, the car, the better car, it has not changed, according to the devil. Why? Because it's not coming from a seed. Trees get older, and trees fall down because they came from a seed, okay? What kills a tree? Is it insects? Is it 
logging? Is it making highways? What kills a tree? The seed kills a tree. Okay. What kills a human? The seed that created the human kills the human. Okay. Now, if you don't believe in seeds, if you're this other guy, and you say, ah, oh, that's a dumb idea, you know, that your life comes from how you treated other people. That's, ah, oh, that's a dumb idea. You saying all my, you saying my house, my wife, my kids, my job, they all come from how I treat other people, from seeds? And we say, yeah. And he says, no, they don't. Then we say, well, if they don't come from seeds, then they cannot wear out. If they don't come from seeds, they cannot wear out. The reason a tree falls down is that the, the seed's power wore out. Okay? If, if something comes from seeds, it must die. If something comes from seeds, it must die. Okay? If the Bentley came from, what's the classic cause of a car, by the way, a new car? Yeah, sharing rides with other people, okay? <laughs> Giving rides to other people. Uh, you know, that's a weird one. You know, I want a new car. What should I do? Should I save up the money? No. You should give rides to other people. And I don't know, Ellie and uh, Gail say they have, they have old people that they, they have a contract. They pick them up like once a week and take them to groceries and take them... <laughs> No, they, they do. They have this scam going on. Uh, you know. And then they keep getting new people keep giving her cars. You know. So uh duh. So anyway, uh so now listen, the angel says to the devil, Okay, let's take this fifty billion dollar demigod who was jealous of the full god who had the $81 billion, and then, or he had a BMW, Bama, and the, <laughs> and the other guy had a Bentley, and the first guy died and was born into the place where the other guy used to live. And we can agree that the Bentley will be there, and the Bentley will be exactly the same as it was before he died. Okay, can we agree? Why? Why is it exactly the same as before he died? The Bentley that he got after he died is exactly the same as the Bentley before he died. Why? It does not come from seeds. It does not come from seeds. If it comes from seeds, it gets old. It wears out. It falls apart. Okay? If it doesn't come from seeds, it'll just sit there forever. Okay? If it's coming from its own side, there's nothing changed. There's nothing changed. The world's still there. The chemicals are chemicals. Steel is steel. Okay? There's no reason for a car to get old if it doesn't come from you. Okay? So the car's still there, right? I'm talking to ignorance, right? I'm talking to the, the devil. And he says, yeah, right. That's what I say. <laughs> okay? All right? So answer me on this. What are they supposed to do? Okay? If the car, if the Bentley did not change because the Bentley does not come from sharing your car with other people before, right? The Bentley just comes from its own side, okay? Then this guy got the Bentley. Now, you tell me, you guys, what's the next line going to say? What's this guy's attitude towards the Bentley? This guy meaning? That guy died from the, from the Toyota realm, or the BMW realm. He was born in the Bentley realm. Now, how should he feel about his new Bentley? He should be jealous. Why? Because his emotions also don't come from sins, and they don't change. Got it? So the angel says to the devil, well, I guess that guy hates the new Bentley. <laughs> Why? Because that didn't change. His feeling didn't change. Of course it changed. He died. No, it didn't change because it's not coming from seeds. Why should it change? 
He should get to his $81 billion realm. <coughs> he should get to his Bentley realm and say, God, I hate this Bentley. All right, here we go. Let's see if that's what they say. Should they be envious of themselves? Should they compete with themselves? I hate the owner of this Bentley, but you are the owner of the Bentley. Yeah, but I hate the owner of the Bentley. Why? Because my hatred didn't change. Why? Because it doesn't come from seeds. And the Bentley doesn't come from seeds. I hate my hatred of the Bentley, and the Bentley are just the same as they used to be because they don't come from seeds. All right? That's the devil talking. Right? So, devil, if you get a Bentley, give it to me. Okay? Cause why? Because you hated them before. And nothing changed. Okay? Nothing changed about the Bentley. Okay? From the Bentley side. All right. Remember, according to you, uh, when the guy gets reborn into a Bentley owner, okay, he didn't change. He didn't change either. The Bentley didn't change. His feelings about the Bentley didn't change. And he didn't change either, okay? The, the guy before the Bentley and after the Bentley is the same guy. Why? He does not change. Why? He does not come from seeds of how you treat other people. Cool. <laughs> uh, so the, the guy who owned the Bentley in the first place, you know, he had this idea about the Bentley that it wouldn't change. And now the guy who, who used to not have a Bentley and has a Bentley, well, he's going to be jealous of it, okay? And don't forget, according to you, a single being who was at the same time both a pleasure being and the lower cousin of that being is another impossibility. If you ask the guy... Is it true somebody died and got a Bentley? Yes. Is the guy who died the same person who didn't have the Bentley? Then he'd have to kind of say no. He's not, okay? He was a person without a Bentley. And now he's a person with a Bentley. So he's not the same person. Not exactly the same person. Before he was Bentley-less, and now he's Bentley-full. Okay, <laughs> so he's the same guy, but now he's a different person. He's a Bentley owner, and he didn't used to be a Bentley owner. Is he or not? What do you say, Mr. Devil? Is he now a Bentley owner? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah, he went to the new realm. He got the Bentley, okay? Yeah, so he had to change, right? Yeah, but how did he change? He doesn't come from seeds. Then devil's like, ah. Okay? Utter impossibility. Utter impossibility. Complete. What you're talking about, you can't say he went from no Bentley to Bentley and also say he doesn't come from seeds because he changed. Got if he came from his own side, he wouldn't change. He'd always be Bentley less. Okay? Got it? And he's tricking you. The first Panchalama is tricking you. He's supposed to be talking about karma and emptiness. And he got us talking about jealousy. Uh, so I think he has two agendas here. He's got a secret, you know. I, he says, well, look, I'll teach you uh, emptiness, okay? And we all, you know, Geshe Michael says, hey, you know, Tim puts out an advertisement. Geshe Michael's going to talk about emptiness. Then everybody's like, yeah, yeah, I'll come, I'll come, you know. I had 800 people show up for an emptiness talk, you know. I got, I think 12 showed up for the morality talk. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, so it's a bait and switch. You promise them emptiness and you give them jealousy. That's, if you said I'm going to teach about your jealousy, nobody would come to class. So I'll, say, I'll teach you about emptiness. Okay, let's talk about the emptiness of your jealousy. <laughs> you get it? That's what he's doing here. He's tricky. He's tricky. All right, good. Uh, now the other guy says, look, now devil's getting desperate, okay? And there's parts where the devil talks for an hour and the angel doesn't get to talk. And then there's parts where the devil doesn't get to talk for it. I, I wish he kind of had, had more. I wish there were shorter parts. But here, 
the devil says, look, look, it's, it's not what you say. My position is not what you say. And the angel says, well, what is your position? He says, well, <clears throat> as long as the guy is a, is a BMW owner, he's a real BMW owner from his own side, okay? As long as he's a BMW <clears throat> owner, he's a BMW owner from his own side. Then he dies, and there's no BMW owner anymore. And then a Bentley owner is born. And then the Bentley owner comes from his own side until he dies. So he wants it both ways, okay? He says, look, the guy can still come from his own side. As long as he's a Bentley owner, he come from his own side as a Bentley owner. Then he dies. Mm -hmm. Then he, from his own side, he becomes a Bentley owner, okay? The guy who didn't have a Bentley be, from it from his own side didn't have a Bentley. Now he has a Bentley from his own side, okay? He changed into a guy who had a Bentley, okay? And we're like, ta, changed, changed? Okay, get it? Oh, the, other, the devil says, well, he was a, a, a BMW owner for a while from his own side. Then he died. And then he became a Bentley owner for a while from his own side. So there's no problem. Your problem doesn't exist. And we're saying, God, did he change from non-Bentley owner to Bentley owner? Did he change from a self-existent non-Bentley owner to a self-existent self Bentley owner? Yes. Then he's not self-existent. <laughs> okay. Got it? Because he changed. Got it? The, the BMW owner who came from his own side became a Bentley owner who came from his own side, and there's no problem. Yeah, but guess what? If he changed from BMW owner to a Bentley owner, that couldn't be from his own side, because it's a change. <laughs> He's saying he didn't change the whole time he was a BMW owner, and then he didn't change the whole time he was a Bentley owner. And they were like, God, did he go from BMW owner to Bentley owner? Uh, yeah, so he changed. Oh, <laughs> it's like, the devil's like, oh, yeah. Okay, got it? Uh, well, since there could never exist a starting or stopping, now we get into a tricky thing. Did he stop being a BMW owner? And did he start being a Bentley owner? Don't forget what the devil said. The devil said he was a BMW owner from his own side for a good while. Then later he was a Bentley owner from his own side. Okay? And then we're like, so did the guy who owned the BMW stop? And he says, well, yeah. And then we say, did the guy who owned the, B the Bentley start? He says, yeah. So you agree that the guy who owned the BMW stopped? And you agree that the guy who owned the Bentley started, right? Yeah. Well, then you contradict yourself. If things are not coming from seeds, they cannot start. If things are not coming from seeds, they cannot stop. There's no reason. Now, carefully here, okay? If a thing truly exists independently of itself, independently, of your seeds, there's no reason why it should stop. And there's no reason why something new should start. Okay, stopping and starting belong to the school called change. And change comes from the seeds change and then the objects change, okay? The object has no reason to change on its own. Then why didn't it change the, during the time you owned it? You know, why? Why would it suddenly start, if, there's, if it comes from itself, how could it not change for a while and then change? Because it didn't change, nothing changed. It was always the same, okay? Something else is happening. And, and he's talking about uh, pleasure beings and half pleasure beings. He's not talking about that. 
he's talking about us. You know, why do we get old? Why, why we are weaker this year than last year? What, why does that happen? He's trying to get us to think about it, okay? He's trying to get us to think about it, okay? Okay. And yeah, so he says, you have neatly contradicted your own assertion that these things neatly means you did a good job. What? I didn't have to contradict you. You contradicted yourself. Thank you. You know, I didn't beat you in the argument. You messed up your own argument. Thank you. You saved me the trouble. Okay. You, you neatly contradicted yourself. Why? He said something that doesn't change stops, and then another thing that doesn't change starts. But don't you get it? That's a change. <laughs> okay, got it? Yeah. All right? So we're like, thank you. We didn't have to fight with you. You, you proved yourself wrong. Got it? You proved yourself that these things are coming from seeds. We didn't have to say anything. Thank you. Okay. The, by the way, she's tough. She's really tough. I wouldn't want to meet her in a dark alley. You know? <laughs> she's really tough. That angel, she's, she's no angel. All right. We're going to go to Hungry Ghosts, okay? We're going to go to Hungry Ghosts. And uh, I used to try to think of other translations for preta. Preta. It means uh, in the Western countries. Uh, we don't believe in, in preta. We don't have such a thing. We don't talk about it. But we do have stories about people who were very attached to their house and then they died, and then their ghost stays in the house. Like, that's, that we have stories in the West. You, some people believe them, some people don't believe them. But it, it's certainly true that some Western people have said there's some kind of strange noises in, in this new house. I bought an old house. And there's weird stuff going on. I see this kind of ghost thing moving around, and people are banging and making noises. They, they talk about that, you know. And then their neighbors say, oh, you're crazy. But, but if it happens to you, you believe it, you know. And, and, and in the Asia, they talk about ghosts, OK, ghosts. And hungry means they were attached to the house. They got attached to the house, then they died in the house, and their spirit, they have a kind of a spirit being, and that spirit being stays in the house, and it, and it stays there for a long time. And normally, those spirits are very hungry and thirsty because the attachment they had to their money and their food and their resources, they did not share them during their life. If they got two donuts, they'd definitely eat both of them. And they wouldn't share one with you, OK? So those people, when they die, they have seeds to see themselves. So we're going to go on to Hungry Ghosts, OK? And Tim, do you want to read? Are you up for that? Take your time. Do it slow. Hasso's going to correct you. <laughs> Guess last taking a break. <laughs> this is how I do the translation classes, Dr. Moore. They they I can relax and they fight with each other. You don't know so okay, they say. You don't trade, trade. Yep, trade. Trade on keep Norway. Keep going. Good keep lines. Cute. 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 Sour Rick, Fasse Supe, Drumpe Day, Drumpa Shendu Ninger Nap, Dane Chi Year, Chi Year, 
Tok good knife. Okay, knife, nice job. Tok is u fechang u hungry? Uh, that's what I said. I hate it. Chinese people, you say a word and they look at you like then they say, Oh, you try to speak Chinese. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. Why it's easier for you to learn English? I don't know. Okay. If things exist in truth, the way you think they do, who's you? The devil. Yeah. Then it's impossible that anybody could die and move on and be born again. What's the word in Tibetan for move on? Poa, okay, and you heard that word used. There, there's ceremonies you do to help people die well to go on. That's called poa, okay? So uh, if things don't come from my seeds, then they cannot change, and it's impossible for a person to die and move on through the pardo and then be born again, okay? It's not possible. What's the first pension lama doing here? He's feeding two horses with one apple? Uh, or what's the other? Killing two birds with one stone. He's, he's getting two things done with one, okay? He's uh, teaching us about emptiness. But he's also bringing up the bardo, you know? And, and, you know, all of us, I think all of us are wondering, where is Jeff Eddy today? Okay, he passed away yesterday. Good, good, good friend, and a good, good, good person. And where is he today? You know, and we're all wondering where. Kind of, you're, you're kind of, didn't you wake up and say, where is Jeff? You know, where is he now? Can he hear us? You know, what's he thinking right now? You know, uh, by the way, it's probably he's uh, near his wife and, and child. He can see them. Uh, and it's like they're behind glass, and, and he's trying to get their attention. And he's, they're crying or, or they're sad. They're sitting at the breakfast table without him, and he's nearby. He's maybe two feet away, and he's like slamming on the glass to get their attention. And, and mostly people who die don't remember they died or they don't know they died. And he feels very angry and frustrated because he, they don't even look at him. They don't turn to him. They can't hear him. So he's, he's like trying to bang on the glass and get their attention. And it takes a while to realize you died. You, 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 you forget you died when you die because you died. <laughs> and then uh, for a while, it's very, very frustrating. Okay, so uh, if... If, if people don't come from seeds, then how can they change? How can they get old? How can they die? How can they go through the spirit realm? And how can they be reborn? Who's talking? Angels talking to the devil. How, how can these changes happen if they come from their own side? Okay. And again, the, don't, don't ever forget, the pension lama's being sneaky. He could talk about cops. He could talk about pens. He's trying to talk about an example that scares you and starts you thinking about Jeff Eddy. He wants you to, he doesn't want you thinking about a pen. He wants you thinking about where are you going to go. Okay. <laughs> All right. And so if someone did get born into the state of a hungry ghost, and that hungry ghost was being tortured by hunger and thirst, okay, the definition of these spirits. This is not the spirit in the bardo. This is a, a spirit after they're reborn. So they, go, they die as a human. They go through a spirit time of up to 49 days. And then they must be born into, a, into some realm. And we're talking about someone who's born as one of those ghosts uh, attached to the house or attached to the food or something like that, okay? Uh, if they're reborn as a hungry ghost, then those who are reborn 
as hungry ghosts. And hungry means you don't have anything to eat, all right? And the angel says, well, I guess all these hungry ghosts who don't have any food are stuffing themselves, right? And the devil's like, where did that come from? <laughs> I'll say it again, okay? The angel says, well, I guess all those people who in this life did not share their resources with Ukrainian refugees, okay? You didn't even think it was important. They think it's important. They can't eat, <laughs> okay? I mean, you got to think of people like that. And you got to do something. Why? Because if you don't, when you die, if you ignore the hungry in the world, then when you die, you, you become hungry ghosts, okay? So, but the angel says, well, I guess all those hungry ghosts are out there eating at McDonald's, a big French, Super Mac French fry, you know? And then the devil's like, God, where do you get this stuff? You know, what, what are you talking about? Hungry ghost is hungry. And the, the, the angel says, no, they're not, because what? By the way, we're following someone who went from demigod to God. God, didn't help anybody, and went to hungry ghost. Okay, okay, got it? So, so then... Uh, the angel says, well, I guess they're, st I'll give you a clue. I guess they're still stuffing their face. What's that mean? They were a deva. They were eating all day. That's about all they have to do. It's like being American. Okay. Uh, they were eating all day. Then they died. They went to the hungry ghost room. Okay. And now they're eating all day. Because they can't change. Because they don't come from seats. They, they don't come from how they treated people or didn't treat people in the past. Didn't help the refugees, for example. Okay, all right. Uh, the riches they possessed as the pleasure of being before are immutable. They cannot change. The food they were, the big feast they were eating as a pleasure being, are solid. Solid means tersuk in Tibetan means cannot change. They are out there, and they are not fluid. They are not fluid. If they come from your seeds, if they come from your karma, things are fluid. Your job situation can flip in one day. You can be VP and get fired the next day, right, Jimmy? I think we both did that. No, <laughs> no, we, we quit. We quit. But uh, things can change. Things are not solid. If they're coming from you, the seeds can stop anytime. Okay? Uh, if, if things are coming from their own side, then hungry ghosts are stuffing themselves because they used to be Devas. No, Geshla, they're only talking about hungry ghosts who were Devas in their last room. No, last life. No, they're not talking like that. They're talking about all Pretas have been Devas. Okay? All hungry people have been full. All full people have been hungry. In the dice, when you throw the dice infinite times, every, every president has been a garbage collector. I like to say everybody in this room has been Miss America uh, countless times. I'm like, yay. <laughs> okay. Uh, in fact, it would be the case that the full bellies they possessed in their previous life as a pleasure being could never change to something else than a belly that was full why would a preta ever feel hungry? Because they couldn't change. Okay, cool? All right. He's getting us to think about where we might go. He's, he's getting us to debate emptiness by using hungry ghosts. By the way, you want to debate emptiness? Okay, I have a joke. Uh, when I go to China or other countries in Asia, and I say, hey, you guys want to go deeper? 
They all go crazy. Dr. Moore is so fun to teach there. They're like, ah, yeah. You know? Then uh, you come back to America, you say, you guys want to go deeper? And they're like, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. If you want. So anyway, if, if you want to go deeper, I know Emily's got a big smile. Emily Chan, <laughs> I can see your big smile. Uh, yeah, see, she wants to go deeper. So if you want to go deeper than this class about emptiness, there are much deeper places to go. And probably the deepest is Nagarjuna. And Nagarjuna wrote a book, and he just named it Wisdom. Okay, Prasnya. He wrote a book called Wisdom. And it, it, it's kind of typical of a person who saw emptiness directly that they like to write in poetry and they like small things. Wisdom. He didn't call it an explication of the emptiness of the you know, personal. And, and he called it, they said, what's the name of the book? He said, Wisdom. Okay, so uh, he wrote a book called Wisdom. It's extremely deep. And it's the source of all emptiness teachings for 2,000 years, okay? It's the ultimate source. So Grandpa Geshe really wanted to teach it. And uh, so Tim and me got together, and we've been teaching it uh, using the explanation of Choni Lama. Choni Lama is a great, great thinker from the 1600s uh, who loves to explain things clearly. And I'm in love with him. I have a crush on him. I, I, we actually, me and John Brady found all his books. His books were burned during the Cultural Revolution. All the copies were gone. We didn't have any copies. And we went all over the world. We found most of them in Russia, in St. Petersburg. But we recovered all of them. And uh, we recovered this book. This is an explanation. Uh, that's going to start Monday. OK? So if you guys are masochistic, <laughs> Vivian, masochistic is an English word. It means the person who likes to give suffering to themselves. OK? So if. If you are ku, ku, ku fe jampang. Ku fe jampang deren. Ku fe jampang deren. The person who thinks that suffering is great. How's that? New word, even in Chinese. OK. Uh, if you want to go deeper, uh, Monday, we're starting uh, to broadcast a, a course on Nagarjuna. And I've been going through Nagarjuna's wisdom, uh, which I wanted to do for my whole life. And I, to tell you the truth, I wasn't ready. And uh, now I'm ready. So we've been going through that. It's very, very difficult. And it's very, very uh, amazing. And there's a tradition in India. And, and I, I've had this, uh, people came up to me and said, you just put out a 640-page book on, on the details of mental pictures for emptiness. I said, yes. They said, Geshla, it's too much. It's too complicated. Can't you just do it simply? Why do you spend year after year, hours after hours? Why do you keep it going deeper and deeper into this? I'll tell you why. The definition of an intelligent student in Buddhism is Rigpa Taye Begoni Tongni Dupe Kansa, someone who loves more proofs of emptiness, is, is the definition of an intelligent student. Okay? So if you want to be an intelligent student, then come to Nagarjuna. Okay? And if you want to make your compassion deeper, if you want to have a deeper compassion, uh, and a deeper emptiness. Come on, come. The class starts on Monday. Okay, Geshla, is it free, or <laughs> does it cost anything? Uh, you know, ACI uh, is a 
charitable organization. We don't make money. We specialize in losing money. Just kidding. Uh, we support ourselves. But we, we do have expenses. We have equipment here. You know, it, we have a building. You, you have to spend money on the building. Okay, so we have a compromise. Uh, you're welcome to come for free. The course is free. If you want to go deeper in the course, uh, if you want to join the study groups, if you want to hear classes taught by the translators, okay, and by senior ACI teachers, then you pay $99, okay? All right. We used to always charge $99 for jewelry, $299, $399, $499. And people get irritated. They say, just call it $500 or just call it $100, Geshla. People actually, okay, I, I learned in business. They actually buy 99 who will not pay 100. Most people. So anyway, if you want all the extra stuff, it, it costs a little bit of money. We use the money to pay for the building, to pay for the internet equipment, to pay for the cameras, to, to pay a minimum um, salary to, to some of the workers. Uh, but if you want to come for free, you're very welcome to come for free. Okay? No problem. All right. Mm, I got 10 more minutes before question and answer. Don't forget to get your questions and answers ready. And do a small prayer that Geshe-la will answer a question faster than 15 minutes. All right. Mm, uh, who's going to read this? Ellie, you feel comfortable? Hasa, you correct her? Loud, okay. <laughs> Slow and loud. Yidak Luki, Trey Hog Day, Dempar Drupe, Giraway, Kirmina, Kene Kewa, Tamche Du, Trey Kong Niki Rangshin Le, Shendum Giraway, Nisipate. Nisipate? That's what I said. Oni Gunpar Yellow An Kuni Nyawar Ki Pate Kepaniki de Trup Gel Nyawat Sad Trahang Dungyal De Sardun Yung Wei Ki Me Gel Nice. Very, very nice. Yay. All right, what does that say? If things exist in truth, it means if they exist from their own side. Okay. When we say self-existently, we mean it doesn't come from the seeds I've planted by being nice or not nice to people. Okay. Uh, and, and if they don't come from seeds, they cannot change. Okay. So... If a person was born as a hungry ghost and they started to feel starved and parched, they couldn't find food, they couldn't find water, okay, then in all their future lives, they should still be hungry, okay? In all their future lives, they should still be hungry. And they should, so over and over again, okay, it doesn't matter where they're born, they should be hungry forever, okay, because they don't change. Once you get born once into a preta realm, once you get born once into a place where you don't have resources because you refused to share your resources in your life, during your life, okay, then according to you, once they get stuck in preta, they should stay there. They should never change. Okay, what's the good news about bad karma? It wears out. <laughs> okay, yay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you're ever in an impossible situation in your life, like a personal situation, just think, this is coming from seeds. It's going to change. You know? <laughs> then at least be happy that your misery is going to change. Okay? It has to change. Uh, if it was coming from its own side, if the situation of a preta, which is not to have enough food and water, if it was coming from its own side, they would never get out of it, 
Okay, they would never change. I love this. I love this sentence. They would continue that collapsing to the ground in birth after birth. That's so funny. And by the way, it's difficult to translate. It's, it's, he uses very exotic language, okay? And he's saying, well, they would just be hungry and thirsty forever and, and fall down every life or so <laughs> to the ground again and get back up. <laughs> you know, they would become horizontal again, and then they would get back up again. You know? and he means they would die, okay? And it's a very the poetic uh, expression that he uses. And then eventually they would go to hell, okay? Uh, and, and so what has he done here? He said, if being hungry and thirsty came from its own sign, then you'd be hungry and thirsty for many lifetimes. And then maybe you would fall down again if you're lucky and die. die. You, the earth would call you back. When you see emptiness directly, one of the things you see is your own death. Okay? One of the things you see when you see emptiness directly is that gravity will reclaim you. Okay? And, and you see it directly. Everyone says they know they're going to die, but only an Arya has seen it and, and really believes it. Okay? So, uh, so you are going to be called back to horizontal. All right? and, uh, and it would be a contradiction to say that they could go from horizontal, now there's, a new, now there's a new topic, the hell realms, okay? So we've been going to different realms. De Deva sounded okay. Half Deva was at least a, a BMW. And now, <laughs> then we got hungry. And now he says, well, don't forget, you're gonna keep falling down and probably end up in the hell realms, okay? Which, He's supposed to be discussing emptiness, and the angel is sneaking in the hell realms, okay? And there's a Christian writer named uh, C.S. Lewis, who I really like, and uh, he's, he said one of the greatest achievements of the devil, the real devil, is that uh, modern people don't believe in hell anymore. So in the Western countries, in the times of Dante, 1300s? I don't remember. Uh, in the West, we did believe in, in hell. And in the Bible, they describe hell. And they say, there's a joke among the Christian writers. They say, one of the great achievements of the devil is that people think it's old-fashioned, or they think it's stupid, to believe in hell, uh, and they don't believe in hell, and then they go there. <laughs> okay? So uh, there is such a place. Of course, it is possible to create seeds so terrible that you live in great pain for a long time, and that's the definition of hell. So uh, now he's doing a new leap. They're making a new leap to the hell realms. Now, now he's going to start... He's going to discuss, look, the, here's the Pension Lama. I'm just talking about emptiness. That's all. I don't have any other goal here. And then people are like, uh-uh, you're trying to get us scared about hell. Well, maybe. <laughs> well, how do you get out of hell? You understand emptiness. Oh, okay. All right. So he's got an extra uh, agenda here. All right. Mm. Before the question and answer, I'm going to talk about a special book. Okay, but I'll let you know. All right, uh, Tim, can we go back to you? And Hasso said he enjoys checking people. Sawe. You want me to read it again? Yes, please. <laughs> Things change because they come from seas. <laughs> First you're not reading, then you're reading again. Okay. 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 
two of me, two of the main gear may uh, rock my leg. Good. Shen Shen Jun Gear Way Nisi Na Sale Jutnya Chiten. Okay. Chiten Yum. Good. Good. Nice. Very nice. Good reading. He works hard on his Tibetan, by the way. God bless you. Okay. All right. Uh, in the moment there that they began to burn in the hells, okay, according to you, a person who went from pleasure being to the hells should be having a good time. Okay? According to you, a person who was a deva and dropped to the hells, they should be having a good time. Why? They don't change because they don't come from sea. Okay? So no problem. You go to the hell, you still have French fries and Netflix and everything. <laughs> okay? Why? Because you had them before. Well, what's that mean? Well, they didn't change. They can't change. They're not coming from seeds. They come from their own side. So there should be Netflix and French fries in the hell. Or pizza, right? What's the kind we like? Pizza Lisa, right? Yeah. Or Mabudofu. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I had Mabudofu late. Since the pleasure they had as the being of pleasure before was completely independent of anything else at all, did not come from my seeds, and could never change and was never conditional. If, as you say, it was impossible for the pleasure being pleasure to change in anything else, then how can they be burned in the hell? When they get to hell, they still have Netflix <laughs> and what was the other thing? French fries. Yeah, okay, all right, according to you. All right, so I'll just repeat today's class, the main point, okay? If things don't come from how we treat other people, if the world does not come from the seeds we put in our mind by how we treat other people, then it should, shouldn't change. Then nothing should change. Then everybody, even the t person teaching should... <laughs> if you get really bored of somebody online, just go, and, and then you got to try not to blink. I'm teaching you, Mr. Dr. Moore, how to have a Zoom call. Like, if you want to get off the Zoom with somebody, you're like, and I'm, and then you have to not blink, okay? Uh, then nothing should change, okay? If things are not coming from how you treat other people, they should never change, okay? Cool. Uh, before we start the question and answer, uh, the, the diamond cutter press, the people who print all of our translations and books, who are in this beautiful building built by John and Connie, thank you again, uh, they, they, they are, I'm not supposed to use bad language, they are kicking ass of getting new books out, and like unbelievable, and you know, for years, we just kind of trickled books out, and now it's like a tidal wave. So there's a new book coming out. Here's a picture of it. It's called Cotton. The, the subtitle is Girls Do Do That. Okay, it's behind you. <laughs> it's behind you guys. Uh, so the book is called Girls Do Do That. Uh, I wrote a book in my three-year retreat called How Yoga Works, okay? And, uh, and, and it's, a, it's a novel, it's a fiction story about a young lady who teaches yoga in a jail. She gets put in a jail, Indian jail, which I actually visited. <clears throat> and, uh, and she teaches yoga and amazing things happen in the jail. So that's a little novel story that I wrote about this young lady who lived a thousand years ago. And that book went crazy. It's like been in the top of Amazon for a long time. It's in the top 0.01% of all books in the world. It went crazy. And then um, it's actually, there's three books. And I only printed one. 
And so my friends uh, asked me, will you print the other ones? There's two more. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, so I, I, I did clean up the second book, and it's ready. And it's coming out in August. It's called Girls Do Do That. <laughs> And it's about how she tricks the monks to become a geshe. Oh. A thousand years ago, a young lady in Tibet tricks the monks and becomes a geshe. Okay, so if you're interested to try, uh, you got to get the book. And it's, it's, I'll be honest, I think it's the best book I ever wrote. It's very, very beautiful. Because I, I was late in my three-year retreat, and, and it was very uh, beautiful. Uh, so YSI, Yoga Studies Institute, they will be having a chapter four of the Yoga Sutra. Uh, you can learn the ultimate last chapter of the mother book of all yoga. And during that time, we'll be discussing and releasing uh, the new novel about this young lady who tricks the monks she actually beats the monks, but I don't want to say everything. Uh, but it's a beautiful story from a thousand years ago and how she learns yoga. Okay. All right, Timothy, back to you. All right, thank you, Geshla. So the, que the first question we have, hold on, let me show it again. The first question we have is, what does it mean when you say, that this has been forced on me by my past karma. Isn't the past also empty of any self-existence? <laughs> and if the past is a projection forced on me by my past karma, what <laughs> triggers the next projection to appear? Mm -hmm. So could we say that seeds aren't self-existent either? Yeah, that's a cool idea. That's a really cool idea. And, and I want to repeat one thing that I really did say to Jeff Eddy as he was dying. And that's that uh, it is possible uh, to, if you can really understand emptiness, it is possible to change time and space itself, okay? There is, is the universe infinite? Yes. Are there infinite planets? Yes. Are there therefore infinite living creatures, animals and people who need help? Yes. Is it possible for a single person to help all of them at the same time? Yes. Is it possible to go to all of those planets and meet each of those living beings, countless living beings, at the same time? The answer is yes. Why? Because all those things are coming from your seeds. All those things are coming from your seeds. So time itself is coming from you. And space is coming from you. And Einstein was right. Okay, Einstein, I, I, mean, I finally understood it, so I like to brag about it, which is my habit. Uh, Einstein said, uh, in theory, uh, if it's correct that heavier things suck, if Newton was correct, if, if, big, if things with a lot of mass, you can think of it as heavier. If heavier, bigger things can attract lighter, smaller things, okay, then light itself should be bendable. You sh when light goes from me to Joe, then, and I don't know, there's some really chubby person over here. We don't have any here. But in theory, the gravity of the heavy person would attract the light slightly and it would bend on its way to Joe, okay? That means Joe would see me a millisecond after I was here. Okay? Because my light would arrive at Joe late, not on time. It'd be delayed by the big fat gravity thing halfway there. Got it? So time should be bendable. And space should be bendable. And real space is probably curved because there's big fat things hanging around. Okay? So... And then uh, it means, uh, in theory, Einstein said, uh, it should be able to slow down time. And Joe 
it should be able to, I should be able to look younger to Joe than I really am uh, because the light took more time to reach him. And he sees how I was 10 minutes ago or an hour ago, okay? And then Einstein said, if I'm correct, in the future, after I die, you guys check it, okay? You guys check it. I say that when Mercury goes around the sun and we have a very powerful telescope in the future and you can watch Mercury as it rotates around the sun and comes, it, the orbit of Mercury comes around the sun and you first see Mercury popping out from the back of the sun, the heaviness of the sun should bend that light and the timing of the orbit should be off. The, the predicted time of the orbit should be a few milliseconds late. He predicted it, and, and he's true. It's, it was proven. It was, he was correct. That means uh, time is also coming from you. Okay? That means time is bendable. Time is changeable. According to your seeds, you, you can change time. When you're sitting in the dentist chair, small amounts of time go by slowly. <laughs> when you're kissing your high school girlfriend or boyfriend, small amounts of time, long amounts of time go by shortly, fast, fastly. This, anyone has observed this, okay? It means, yes, the past is coming from me. And there's a debate in the higher school that the past is still active. Lincoln's assassination, uh, the explosion of Krakatoa, uh, these events are still affecting us now. Things that happened a million years ago are still affecting us now. In that sense, the past still exists. Okay? The past never stops existing, and it can be bent, and it can be manipulated, and it's cool to do. It's fun to do. Okay? If you feel like you can't get enough done or you have too many things to do and you want the miracle method to doing more things than a human being is supposed to be able to do, learn how to bend time. Learn how to change, learn how to change time. It's fun. It's cool. It's really awesome. Okay? So yeah, it's totally possible. And yes, the past does come from me. It doesn't mean the past doesn't do anything, it means the past does do something, okay? It proves the past does do something. And the past still affects us now. Things that happened 10 years ago are still affecting us now. They are gone, but they still act, so they are still existing, okay? Cool? How, how do we bend it? How do you bend it? Wow. <laughs> I, I'll tell you honestly, okay? It sounds stupid. The deepest wisdom, as Nagarjuna proved, sounds too simple. It's suspiciously simple, okay? The deepest wisdom is suspiciously system, simple. But if you want to bend time, if you want to have more time, and you want to put out books every week, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> then help someone else who has a time shortage, okay? Find, find I, I personally, like to use uh, moms who are stressed out from their kids. And I say, I'll babysit. And they say, why? I say, I want more time. I will save you time, and I will get more time. And I, I use it. I do it and, it, and I get more time. Okay, So it works. Time is also coming from seats. All right, next question, Timothy. We're almost done, you guys, here. Three more minutes. Then we have a... I think Tim is giving us a big breakfast or something. Just kidding. <laughs> Thank you, Geshla, for the answer. Um, so the, the question here is, what, what do I do in a moment when a very strong negative emotion comes up and it's, a, and it's difficult to resist even yelling back? You know, and then after that, I have this feeling of regret that I did yell but I wasn't able to stop it. What, what should we be, how should we think about this? Yeah, good question. So we're talking about compulsion. Like you feel, you, the time, you're on a short time frame. 
someone says something really insulting or something, or, or there's an attractive object like a croissant. <laughs> and, uh, sorry, <laughs> and uh, you, don't, you don't have much time, okay? You don't have much time, uh, response time. And, and I'll be honest, it's, it's too short a time to, use, to, to remember that it's coming from you, okay? It's too, the person, it happens to me when I'm driving. People in Arizona don't know how to drive. <laughs> then <laughs> they do stupid things. And I'm, I'm on my way <clears throat> to teach a class about not getting upset. And I get upset on the way. <laughs> I actually use special mudras. Uh, and uh, so I, sometimes something's going too fast to remember the seeds. And let's face it, it happens to everybody. It happens to me on the way here. And it just sometimes it happens like that. So what can we do? What's, what shall we do, Geshe-la, when we know we're not going to be able to control ourselves? And there is a technique, and it's called 10-second delay. It's called 10-second delay, okay? Before you show the mudra, <laughs> count to 10. Just count to 10. During that 10 seconds, you are building extremely powerful good seeds, okay? So if you can't control yourself, and your bad habit is going to explode, and you know you can't st stop yelling or something, just wait 10 seconds. Count to 10. Just count to 10. Then yell. <laughs> then make the special sign. Okay? It's fine. It's wonderful. Okay? <laughs> Someone hands you a croissant. Count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, down. <laughs> <laughs> okay? And they say, okay, the ancient books say that the 10 seconds you delayed is powerful good seeds for next time, okay? They say that, that the desire, which is born from knowledge, that I will wait for 10 seconds is extremely powerful seeds, much more than the bad seeds you make with the special hand sign Okay, it's very interesting. 10 seconds of controlling yourself and then explode. Or then do the, the desired thing that you weren't supposed to do. Okay, you, those 10 seconds are extremely powerful karma. Okay, so that's my suggestion. I use this method frequently. All right, I'd like to give some thank yous uh, now. Pachi, uh, thank you for being the primary producer of this show. Pachi is very busy. He has a new son, beautiful baby named Shanti from his beautiful wife, Pao. And thank you, Pachi. We know you're busy. And thank you very much. Uh, we'd like to thank the ACI translators. I will do this very slow. And that's the only slow thing I said today, and I'm sorry that I spoke too fast. So good job. Thank you. The tech heroes, uh, it takes a lot of tech to do this emanation body thing, and thank you for that. And ACI is blessed with a huge amount of volunteers, and like unbelievable. It's a small army. If If... If we ever need to defend America, you can come here and uh, it's, a, it's a small army of people who are volunteers and, and staff, and thank you for that. Uh, finally, reminder that tomorrow, uh, due to two fine people from Diamond Mountain Retreat Center who asked me to give them bodhisattva uh, we decided to piggyback it on tomorrow's class. So after the second class tomorrow, we'll take like a 20 minute break. And then we're gonna have a bodhisattva vow ceremony. I, I'm sort of a, what do you call it? Uh, what do you call someone who enjoys eating? I'm a, gluttony. not glutton. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who likes different, I'm a, 
Connoisseur. Not a glutton. <laughs> I'm a connoisseur of ritual texts. And so I enjoy finding a different Bodhisattva vow ritual texts. And I found one by Nagarjuna. Okay, I found a, a text by Nagarjuna of how to take the Bodhisattva vows. So I'm in love with that one, and, and I would like to use it tomorrow. So if you haven't taken Bodhisattva vows before, you are welcome to take them. Grandpa is offering to give you a special name only for the people who didn't take the vows before. Okay? Uh, but if you did already take the Bodhisattva vows, you are allowed to take them again. And it's a good idea. It makes them fresh again. And it makes them powerful again. And I'm going to take them tomorrow also. Uh, so you're very welcome to come tomorrow. If you don't have vows, uh, let Tim or the staff know. And if you take them tomorrow, we will uh, arrange to get you your, a new name, a Bodhisattva name. Okay? Uh, if you already took the vows, keep your old names. Okay? But it's a very good idea to refresh them and to take them again. You know, some people I know take them uh, every day. Okay, so, uh, you know, uh, it's, good to, it's good to refresh them. And I'm going to refresh mine. So that'll be after class, after the second class tomorrow. Uh, about 20 minutes after the second class.